on Acoustic Tuesday, episode 31, we're gonna have a podcast extravaganza. I'm gonna share with you a must-see music documentary, and you're gonna learn about a store that you're gonna have to check out if you wanna get out of your guitar comfort zone. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Policastro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 31. And right off the bat, I wanna make sure you never miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. So right this very second, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. And after you do so, make sure to hit that little bell so you get notified of every new video. And better yet, if you want Acoustic Tuesday delivered directly to your email, it's really easy. Just click the link in the description. You'll get Acoustic Tuesday right to your email and you'll get access to my Guitar Geek list, which has items on it that you do not want to miss. So let's kick things off on this very Acoustic Tuesday with a very Acoustic Tuesday tradition, our Guitar Geek Trivia Question of the Day, which is as follows. At the age of 27, a luthier opened a shop on Kenmare Street in Manhattan's Lower East Side. Prior to opening the shop, this luthier apprenticed with his uncle, Signor Ciani, building Neapolitan-style mandolins, violins, and guitars, as well as apprenticed with another local luthier, Mario Frisali who built violins. Who was this luthier? Was it A, Federico Moretti? Was it B, Orville Gibson? Was it C, John D'Angelico? Or was it D, Elmer Stromberg? Go ahead and ponder that while we dive into Acoustic Tuesday. And of course, what makes Acoustic Tuesday tick is of course you guitar geeks out there uniting, but also Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the first, and Levi Coila, the man with the technical plan. Hi, Tony. Gentlemen. Hi, Noah. You're Levi. looking, um, Tony. Uh, dare I say, ambitious today. Thank you. Uh, I heard that there's a bike ride on the horizon. Oh, yeah. The sooner we get this done, yeah. the sooner we get out in the, uh, the wilderness. Yeah, we're starting a biker <laughs> gang. This is uh, Noah's initiative. He's I'd obviously like, the leader. I'd like to think this is a trial. Of course. But I think Noah is like, hey, this is the first of a very long string of, of bike rides. So well, we'll once see. Once he puts the helmet and glasses on, you pretty much have to listen to him. And if you missed Noah in his bike gear, you got to check out Acoustic Tuesday episode 30 because it's, it's a sight to be seen. Let's just put it that way. And, and when you see that image, you'll know why when he comes in saying, we're going for a bike ride, you know why Tony and I are like, okay. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, do you have anything that you're looking forward to on today's show? Yes. Noah, go first. Do you remember? Yeah, are we saying what it actually is? No, no. No, well, item number two is mine. Okay, I, I like that one Item too. number two is mine. I like See, I think too. last week uh, you stole mine as well. But that's that's mine also <laughs> for, a, for a lot of reasons. Wait, Tony's over this here. This one will be obvious. It'll be obvious why this is our yeah, favorite one. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's well, I, I like all the items, but item number two, I'm looking forward to sharing a with lot all went of into you. That. It did, that. yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of miles went into item number two. Um, now that my hands are thawed, I biked in this morning to just get a jump start on these guys. My hands are now working. Uh, so let's just dive into the Acoustic Guitar Geek list that, of course, is Acoustic Tuesday, starting with a store that I want you to know about. You know, every, every time, you know, as guitar geeks, we want to wander outside our comfort zone every now and again. And what I mean by that is, you know, every now and again you think, okay, I'm kind of in a rut on the guitar. Maybe, maybe a different instrument will help me see the guitar with a whole brand new perspective. And that's a great line of thinking. Some people go the banjo route. Some people go the ukulele route. Well, this store is focused on mandolins, and that's exactly what item number five is today. It is called the Mandolin Store, located in Surprise, Arizona. Yes, it's a town, Surprise, Arizona. And it is a store, much as the name describes, a store that's absolutely chocked full of mandolins. Top to bottom, this store is amazing. And I had my first exposure to this store when I was working for Weber Mandolins uh, out here in Montana. And the mandolin store is literally uh, the number one Weber dealer. And uh, I had a chance to really get to know Dennis Vance, the owner, and also Brian, uh, one of the fellows that works at the shop there. And they are top notch from, from customer service all the way through follow through, through product selection. I remember having long conversations with Dennis about uh, 
designing mandolins, stuff that he knew that his customers would want, but maybe they didn't know it yet. Uh, really cool stuff like octave mandolins with a different twist, some really cool distressed things. And uh, overall, I'm not talking just Weber here. He, he stocks some amazing brands. Weber is one of them, Gibson, Pava, uh, Ellis, they, they, all sorts of mandolins, Collings. I mean, it's, it's total eye candy. So if you're not near Surprise, Arizona, uh, you can check out his website. Just go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on episode 31, and you'll see the link right to the store in the uh, show notes, as well as actually a store tour uh, that, that they did. So you'll be able to check that out if you go to the show notes. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna first just take a second here and explain to you that I absolutely love music documentaries. As a music geek, as a guitar geek, I 100% love music documentaries. And this is a point of, of tension in my relationship. Oftentimes, Whitney and I will sit down to watch a movie and she'll say, I wanna watch this movie that's a romantic comedy of sorts. And I'll say, oh, okay, well, can we watch this documentary? Uh, so, so after some negotiation, uh, usually I win about 37% uh, of the time. We'll get to watch a music documentary, which brings me to the music documentary that I feel is a must-see music documentary. Item number four on Acoustic Tuesday is the Heartworn Highways documentary. This documentary is... Well, I'll just say it. it's a must-see. Whether you like the genre of music, singer-songwriter genre, it doesn't matter. This documentary is impactful visually. Uh, the story is impactful. And just, the, just the, the vibe that's created around this whole entire uh, movie, documentary, is, is unreal. Uh, you're going to see people like uh, Steve Earle, Guy Clark, Rodney Crowell, Towns Van Zant in their prime, in their songwriting prime, all hanging out together. Uh, so I know you might be drooling at this point, so I've actually found a really cool trailer that I want to share with you right now. So let's have a look. If I can just get off of this LA freeway without getting killed or cut, I've been down a road and proud of smoke to some land. I ain't bought, bought, bought if I can just get off of this LA freeway. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, uh, excuse me, I'm Towns Van Zant, and this is my dog Geraldine here. Geraldine, come here. Geraldine? It's the first song I ever wrote about. Is it? Well, sometimes I don't know where this dirty road is taking me. And it's all right now. I just hit my stride. Women love an outlaw, I heard folks say. And I'll be an outlaw till my dying day. So Heartworn Highways, which was originally released in 1974 and is obviously stunning. You just saw a clip of it. But they also, uh, in 2014, on the 40th anniversary of the original Heartworn Highways, they just released Heartworn Highways Revisited. 
which is a kind of a, a similar take on some modern Nashville uh, songwriters, players, uh, outlaw Nashville songwriters, players. Uh, it features Langhorn Slim, Shovels and Rope, Justin Towns Earl. Um, oh, I'm forgetting some other ones, but it, it's it's very cool because it's the same premise, and it actually also has um, got footage of Guy Clark in it before he passed. Um, also, uh, uh, David Allen Coe is in it, uh, a current day, which is which is interesting to see, and and of of course gain their perspective on things. Now, I've only seen the trailer for the revisited uh, uh, Heartworn Highways, but. It looks very cool, and if it's even half as good as the original, it will be downright amazing. And I want to thank a really dear friend of mine, Simon Flory, who's an amazing musician, songwriter, uh, who actually introduced me to uh, this this particular documentary way back when I was working in Chicago. And uh, so thanks, Simon, for sharing this documentary with me, and of course, I am now sharing it with you and encouraging you to check it out. Uh, now... I've got a bunch more stuff to go over today. In fact, I've got, uh, well, our favorite item that's coming up, and I'm talking about the three of us here, which I think will be a, a definite a cool thing for you to check out too. But I want to uh, I want to look in the mailbag first because, well, the mailbag was full, and uh, there's been some really cool stuff coming in. And I'm going to start with, uh, uh, this, is, this is a thank you and a mailbag arrival from me here. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Scott Elliott, from Elliot Capos. Uh, Scott, we featured Scott uh, at Elliot, uh, Elliot Capos on Acoustic Tuesday episode nine. And I told, uh, I shared with everybody that I was a big fan of the Elliot Capos, particularly the McKinney uh, Capo. And I got a package in the mail just the other day and lo and behold, it's a brand new uh, McKinney Elliott Classic Capo, which uh, they just came out with, and I'm just, I was stunned. I was super excited to get it, so I wanna, I wanna really thank Scott for sending this, and uh, also the very nice uh, note that he wrote. Uh, so thank you, Scott, and for those of you who wanna know more about Elliott Capos, uh, please check out Acoustic Tuesday Episode 9. You can go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on Episode 9, all the details are there, and of course, um, they have way more Capo options than just the McKinney, uh, than just the, the McKinney Classic. So uh, make sure to check those out if you're so inclined. Uh, next up from the mailbag, another thank you from David M. David M. This, this box arrived the other day and I kind of shook it and it was really heavy. And I looked at Noah and I'm like, I have no idea what this is. And Noah made some guesses, which I won't share. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it actually came from David M. And he said, um, I'm going to read part of this just because I think it's, it, was, it was a really cool, uh, kind gesture. He said, uh, Tony, I'm cleaning out the house as we prepare to downsize and came upon a Christmas gift of yore that rightly belongs with a true guitar geek. And um, <laughs> so he actually sent this really stellar book. It's called With Strings Attached. And it's just kind of a... Um, dare I say, a guitar geek encyclopedia of stunning vintage instruments. In fact, today's trivia question came from this book. In fact, I have a feeling many more guitar geek trivia questions will come from this book. So thank you, David M., uh, for, for uh, sending this over uh, to, uh, for, for us guitar geeks here to, to share and have a look at. Um, also, oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff still left. Um, I, I went on a bit of a record binge. I had to order uh, Coulter Wall's first album, Imaginary Appalachia. This literally just came in. I'm so, I'm so pumped to spin it at home. So that came in. And a little bit of, uh, off the acoustic path, if you will, is something that I ordered, I pre-ordered it. When was it, in February? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I think it was in right. February, yeah. maybe even earlier. Um, something that I was so excited to get. Now, uh, you guys may or may not know this, but I am... I'm a I'm a metalhead. I'm a I'm a I'm a guitar geek. I love acoustic music, but deep in me, there's 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 a a, a deep love for heavy metal music. And the the Arch Enemy box set just came out, so I ordered I pre-ordered it, and they kept delaying the ship time because it was apparently incredibly popular. And it came in, and I I just about was doing backflips. Noah witnessed it. Um, in fact, funny story. I'll make it quick. I saw the UPS guy show up. As many of us guitar geeks do, we, we watch the UPS guy, because if you ever see a big, long, rectangular box coming to your front door, you know it's going to be a good day. So the UPS guy shows up, 
and he's holding a box that I think is this this box set. And uh, he drops it off, and I go downstairs to look, and there's nothing there. I go outside to look, there's nothing there. And I said, Noah, can you go look for me? Because I don't think I, I think I, I don't think you dropped it off. So then I was bummed because Noah looked and there was no package there, no package to be found anywhere. So then I checked my tracking and I thought, okay, it said it was dropped off. Maybe somebody stole my box set. Nobody stole my box set. We're in Montana. People don't do those things here. And uh, I had to actually go on a search around the building. I found it. Lo and behold, it's here and I'm excited. I just wanted to share that with you. Last but certainly not least in the mailbag is this. It's a mystery item. It's going to be featured on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday, and you're not going to want to miss it. And I just ordered it, and I haven't even, haven't even tried it out yet, so I can't even show you what it is. You're just going to have to tune in to a future episode to find out. But I can assure you, you won't be disappointed. So that's the mailbag. That's the mailbag, guys. And I'm excited about it, and I think it's going to, I think it might chill out for a while. I went well, on a bit of a binge. I'd say that everything in that mailbag, I think, was for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you have something coming that we'll probably be sharing shortly. Oh, that'd be cool. You know? I would, we didn't want to presume <laughs> that we'd be sharing. Well, you've been very excited about it. Uh, well, moving on. Sorry, sorry. I get, I get a, little, a little excited about things. Uh, who am I listening to this week? Well, of course, that is Acoustic Tuesday item number three. And the artist that I'm listening to this week was a bit of a surprise discovery because it came up on a recommended artist link. And I totally, I, I clicked it. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but man, was I happy I clicked this individual's name. And this individual's name is Otis Gibbs. Now, Otis Gibbs is, uh, how, how do I want to describe him? Uh, we featured John Marlin, Moreland uh, a bit ago on Acoustic Tuesday, so he has a little bit of the John Moreland uh, timbre in his voice, but it's maybe a little bit more gritty, maybe a little bit more rough, and his songwriting is, dare I say, Dylan-esque in a way of, of storytelling and painting just very vivid pictures of, uh, of, of story. It's, it's unbelievable. So let's, let's first listen to his song, uh, Ghosts of Our Fathers, and and uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail here in a bit. He was almost blind. They say it happens when you've been punched too many times. His hands were stone. He was a pinnacle champion in an earlier life. It was hard not to stare. And his busted up nose and cauliflower ears. And he'd smile at me. And say the toughest fighters have their souvenirs How to carry on When the heart is punch is strong Take away the burden from our shoulders He lived next door He'd sometimes get with my father and talk about life And sit on the porch Drinking beer and remembering happy times. Now, now Otis has a whole slew of albums to pick from. I mean, talk about prolific. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but there's three that I've targeted that I think um, I think are a really good example of his work. Uh, we've got the newest one, Mount Renra, which uh, came out, I want to say, in 2017, so last year. Also, uh, Harder Than Hammered Hell, which has great, uh, great cover. And the, the one I've really been doing a deep dive on is Souvenirs of a Misspent Youth. And what I love about that particular album is that it, I feel like in a weird way, the songwriting just harkens back to childhood experiences that we all have but he does he, the descriptions are so amazing and so I, I just encourage you to check that out um, he's a, he's a fantastic uh, singer songwriter and uh, upon doing my research on Otis I discovered that he did 
does currently a podcast. And this was a really cool discovery because the podcast is, is outstanding. It's amazing. Uh, the podcast is entitled Thanks for Giving a Damn. And the whole notion is that he's sharing stories uh, with other people of, of musicians and experiences and things like that. And just as his songwriting is descriptive, these stories are incredibly descriptive as well. Uh, so I've actually uh, pulled a little bit of, of a segment out of um, episode 144, which is uh, entitled Guy Clark's Favorite Show. So we're going to have a listen to that real quick so you can get a taste. I'm not sure if I've said this before on the show, so if I have, forgive me. But the very first time I ever played in England was opening for Guy Clark at the Sage in Gateshead. It's a beautiful theater couple thousand people the show just went great and to this day it's one of my favorite gigs i've ever played it's very special to me but at soundcheck i'd never met guy clark before and i was a huge fan but i was really looking forward to just getting to stand around him and watch him a little bit but i sat out i'm the only person out in the audience during the sound check Anybody who's set through a Guy Clark sound check will tell you that it's quite the ordeal. It seemed like the sound check went on for about an hour. Guy would tell the sound guy, turn it up till it squeals. And then he'd turn it up and it'd start squealing and then the sound guy would turn it back down. And Guy would say, I didn't tell you to turn it back down. So he'd turn it back up, it'd start squealing. And then Guy said, okay, now make it stop squealing. And then the sound guy, all confused, rushed around and tried to figure all that out. Like I said, this went on for about an hour, maybe more. And when he was finally done, he looked over at me sitting there in one of the little theater seats and said, uh, are you the opening act? And I jumped up. Yes, sir, Mr. Clark. Uh, he says, what's your name? I said, my name's Otis. It's very nice to meet you. He said, where are you from? I said, I'm from Wanamaker, Indiana. He looked me dead in the eye, looked completely unimpressed. He said, I've been to a lot of places in my life, but I ain't never been there. He turned around and he walked off stage, and I just stood there with a stupid grin on my face, thinking, man, I just met Guy Clark. Needless to say, as a guitar geek, I was completely captivated, so I want to encourage you to check out not only his musical works, but of course his podcast as well. And if you want any more details on that, just go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on episode 31, all of the links, uh, there's album links in there, additional song links in there, as well as links to the podcast as well. Uh, so please check that out. Now, I've got, uh, uh, well, I've got some important stuff coming up. In fact, our favorite item is coming right up. But first, let's let's visit Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. for a little small win report. <laughs> All right. Small wins today, as usual, come from last week's AT episode number 30. And our first small win today comes from J.S. Kaggle. Uh, it could be Kaggle. I'll go with Kaggle. I had the chance to go to Aruba last month on a business trip, but was afraid to travel with one of my guitars, having never traveled on an airplane with a guitar before. While I was there, I found what turned out to be the island's only music store, oh, cool. Cliffix Musical Instruments. I spoke with the owner about renting a guitar for the week. They didn't rent guitars, but he did point me to a pawn shop, so I was able to secure an inexpensive but solid Fender acoustic. I had the small win of playing guitar on the beach for the awesome sunsets. Also checked off a bucket list item. That is so <laughs> rad. That's awesome. I thought I thought Aruba alone was the small win, let yeah. alone the full blown guitar experience too. I know. Uh, next one comes from Evening Crow. Small win had a six to seven week work trip that allowed me to save money for a limited English Walnut J45. Came back to buy it only to find a J15 that sounded, played, and looked better on sale. Needless to say. <sighs> I got my walnut fix. Also loving the show. Found it this weekend and have been binge watching it since. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations on the new guitar. And I didn't even notice the whole like work trip thing. Yeah. Being there. That was totally <laughs> random. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, third one uh, today comes from Michelle V. A small win, actually a big one for me. Went to a local acoustic jam and sang and played. All right. Uh, this was my first time singing solo in public. Sang Ramblin' Round by Woody Guthrie and Katie Daly. Daly? Daly. It was so much fun. Awesome. Cheers. That's, that's an awesome one. Congratulations. And, yes. Thank you. Well... <laughs> <laughs> last, last well, one. congratulations was to Michelle and you. Right, oh, thank you. You read it. You read it very well. And you, uh, <laughs> last one today comes from Blake Crocker, and he says, "I just wrote my first song, and Friday I'm going to play it in front of my high school class. Wish me luck." All right. Well, good luck. That's awesome. Good luck, Blake. Fantastic. Right. Is that the is that the full report? That's. I keep cutting you off, Noah. I'm really sorry. That's our small wins <laughs> for today. Tony. <laughs> well, thank you, Noah. And of course, if you want your small win featured on an Acoustic Tuesday episode, it's really easy. In the comments below, just put hashtag small win and then go ahead and describe your small win. We love reading them. We love sharing them. And most importantly, they're so important because it helps spread this. It, it helps to spread this positive momentum that as guitar players, as guitar geeks, we all need. So please put your small wins in the comments below. Ah, here comes here comes the thing that we're excited about. Now, now, uh, was this last month? It's all blurring together. I think it was last month. I went out to Taylor Guitars to um, meet with Andy Powers about the V-Class bracing after an Acoustic Tuesday episode in which I was kind of asking some questions about uh, the V-Class bracing. And they called up and said, well, why don't you just come out here? We'll fly out, and, and you can sit down with Andy and ask all the questions you want, and we'll record the whole thing. Well, well, they did, and that's coming. But while I was there, they also do a podcast. So you get a little double dose of podcasts today, and that's exactly what item number two is on today's Acoustic Tuesday. It's Taylor's From the Factory podcast. Okay, this is such a cool podcast because what it does is it takes, a, 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 so Jay and Cameron are the hosts and they're just, first of all, they're awesome guys to hang around with. So Jay and Cameron, uh, thank you, you guys rock. Uh, but they do a great job of putting on this podcast. They interview uh, folks, folks from, <laughs> tough to say, folks from the factory <laughs> and also uh, Taylor artists and just other people that are in this acoustic world that we live in. And on episode 12, I was very humbled to be their guest. And I had such a blast sitting down and chatting with them. It was a complete, I, I was laughing so hard. Um, so you'll, if you listen to the episode, again, it's episode number 12. It's entitled uh, Geeking Out with Tony Policastro. And if you listen to episode 12, you're going to get a little bit of background on me and how I got into this whole acoustic guitar thing. You'll get to hear my honest response of the V-Class bracing and uh, a funny uh, story that I share about what I initially thought of their marketing. Jay and Cameron are both marketing people, so it was pretty ironic. And then also, I actually uh, share my prediction of the future of acoustic guitars, which I found... Uh, um, uh, a fun question to answer. Uh, when somebody asks you that, it's kind of like a, oh, man, I haven't really thought about that. So it was a, it was a really fun sit down with those two guys. And uh, the podcast in and of itself is awesome. Um, so please, please check that out. Uh, to find out more about that, you can go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com. Click on episode 31. All of the links are in the show notes. Uh, you can, of course, uh, go directly to the From the Factory podcast uh, and check out the other episodes as well. So... We're getting close to to, to uh, the grand finale, if you will, the grand uh, guitar signal finale, if you will. Uh, but first, I want to know, we want to know what you think about the show so far. So in the comments below, let us know what you think. Did you make a new discovery? Do you want us to make a new discovery? Do you just want to tell us where you're tuning in from? Uh, please do so in the comments below. And of course, there seems to be this recent hot topic, dare I say, new Acoustic Tuesday tradition entitled, uh, you know you're a guitar geek when. So if you want to go ahead and finish that statement in the comments below, I welcome you to do that. Just put hashtag, you know you're a guitar geek when, and then go ahead and finish that statement. Noah's been compiling those. Uh, he's got a bunch of those to share as long as well as um, some comments from a previous episode and some shout outs. So Noah, I'm going to just, I'm going to hand over the mic to you. Pass the mic. All right. Not drop it. I'm going to pass it. 
So uh, some shout outs to those who tuned in last week. We got George, Michael, Rob, Scott, Ken, Cal, Nicholas, Tim, Tony, Jason, Russ, Viking Padre, Mm -hmm. Claudia, Al, Cheryl, Michelle, Christopher, Vincent, Wang Chung, and more. Nice. Uh, Now, you mentioned a lot in there. Are we rolling with the guitar geek wins? Let's save that to okay. the, to the end. Let's just share some comments and then we'll that'll warm us up. Okay. And then when we're limber, we can go into the you know your guitar geek wins. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So comments coming in from last week's episode. First comes from Vincent. And Vincent says, Love the show. My wife and I love watching as we are beginners in the guitar world and learning. We just recently bought our first acoustic guitars. All I purchased right. a Martin Triple O C X E. Nice. And she bought an Epiphone Dove Pro. Cool. Fantastic. Next comment comes from Ron. Uh, This is his first time commenting, but he's seen most of the Tuesday shows. Uh, Today's is great. Loved the group of seven coverage. Of course, he's referring to last week's episode. Super job. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. commenting. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And last comment uh, comes from Tony. And he says, ever since I found your show... I've been binging on the past shows. Sadly, I am near the end. I've enjoyed watching the evolution of this show. The evolution of Tony's growing tattoo collection, various hairstyles of Noah, the increased interaction with Levi and Noah, the dart challenge, which seemed to have been faded out, but I got a kick out of, uh, the addition of Matt, uh, the increase of subscribers, and the slight increase in the length of showtime, which is great. Can't get enough. This has fired me up to keep practicing. I've told all my friends who play about the show, and I can't wait to see how the acoustic life will continue to evolve. Tony, Noah, and Levi, cheers. Oh, cheers, man. Thanks That's so awesome. much. Appreciate the, the binge watching of the of the shows. That's it's like pretty cool. Hours. That's a lot of, it's <laughs> a lot of that's a lot of acoustic Tuesday. That's outstanding. Well, thank you so much. And speaking of, of sharing the show, the whole premise of Acoustic Tuesday is to get guitar geeks to unite. And how do we get more guitar geeks to unite? Well, you share the show. So if you have a guitar geek that you know about, a friend of yours, a neighbor, an acquaintance, make sure to share the Acoustic Tuesday show with them. It's as easy as just sending them a link of AcousticTuesdayShow.com. Encourage them to check it out. Encourage them to binge watch if, if they so choose to do that. And also encourage them to share it as well. Because, of course, the more guitar geeks we get here in here, the more guitar geeks unite. And that's the whole point. And speaking of Guitar Geeks Uniting, this final feature today is uh, absolutely awesome. One of my favorite parts of the show, it's uh, hearing from you guys, Acoustic Tuesday viewers, watchers, fans, and, and of course, sharing your guitar signals. And there's a whole bunch of guitar signals that I want to share with you today. Uh, some really great stuff. I mean, let's just put it this way. There's whiskey involved. There's a dog. And I think every instrument is represented. So there's a lot of stuff to go over here. So let's kick it off with um, with John H. Sharing his guitar signal complete with a glass of Eagle Rare bourbon, which of course is one of my favorite standby bourbons. And in his email, he said, sorry, Noah and Levi, it had to be bourbon. So I want to thank John H. for his guitar signal. He's got an Eastman slot head small body guitar in there. He's got two Martins and a Taylor. So pretty outstanding stuff. Thank you, John H. Uh, and of course, up next, we have Ken P. Now, Ken P., this, this guitar signal comes with a, a fantastic story because the title of his email, all it said was hashtag guitar signal, and it said this. It was very dire. Had to shoot before shirt arrived and while wife out of town. That was it. That was the only message I got. <laughs> but Ken P. has an outstanding guitar arsenal. And he has an All Mahogany Taylor, a Breedlove Sitka and Koa Concert Cutaway, a Taylor Limited Edition Coca Bolo and Spruce, a La Patrie Classical, a Taylor GS Mini, and a Weber Bitroot, which is near and dear to my heart because I used to work for Weber Mandolins. And of course, Ken totally nailed it because he included Charlie, the Pomeranian, the dog, and of course, the cat. So uh, uh, win on all fronts. Uh, thank you, Ken P., for sharing your guitar signal with us. Now, I will have a quick update to this. Ken P. also followed up with a shirt, uh, with a picture of him uh, uh, wearing the guitar signal shirt. So it did indeed all happen. And I'm just going to take a, a quick second here 
and tell you how to get your guitar signal featured on Acoustic Tuesday, it's actually pretty easy. There's three steps involved. Step number one, make sure you get yourself a guitar signal shirt, much like Ken P just did. Uh, there's a link right beneath the show. You can go ahead and click on it and order one. And then step two, gather up all your guitars pets, cats, dogs, members of your family, whomever is involved in your guitar journey, gather everybody up and snap a picture. Of course, you have to be wearing your guitar signal shirt. And then next, send that very picture to us here at support at tonypolacastro.com with the subject heading hashtag guitar signal. And then you'll be featured on an uh, episode of Acoustic Tuesday, an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Let me dive back in with, I think, one of the biggest guitar signals we've seen here on Acoustic Tuesday. And um, it's really, it's, it's not about the size of your guitar signal, I'll say that, but this guitar signal is, is impressive. This is from Peter D. and Colleen. And there's a fun story that goes along with this one. Uh, his email said, hey guys, I'm a new TAC member and my girlfriend Colleen and I are both huge fans of Acoustic Tuesday. After much planning, furniture rearrangement, and hauling guitars from the music room in the basement, we've finally taken my guitar signal photo. And as you can see, of course, that, that, was, that was quite the endeavor. There's a lot of instruments there. Uh, he's holding the Martin D28 Leuven Brothers model. Uh, Colleen has a Stradlin mandolin. He's got a close carbon fiber guitar, a Collings Waterloo with the Southwest scene, a Taylor Koa K26 CE, and two electric guitars that I am totally drooling over, both B&Gs, uh, B G little sister models, one with humbuckers, one with P92s, a stellar guitar signal. Thank you, Peter D and Colleen. And last but certainly not least, we have Russ H. proudly sporting his guitar signal shirt. And he says in his email, here's most of the acoustics. Had to leave in two basses to represent. And I thought Noah would like that because Noah is, of course, a bass player. He also like has it. what looks like uh, a D28 uh, on the couch, Martin 12 string that he's holding. He's got resonator guitar, a banjo, mandolin, uke, and uh, so pretty much all the instruments are represented. And one little Easter egg I found, because I like to find Easter eggs in these pictures, is on his music stand, he's got one of my favorite books of all time. It's called The Art of Chords. I've actually, I featured it in probably the, it was either the first or second episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, one of my favorite books, so I was happy to see that on there, uh, Russ. So thank you for sharing your guitar signal with us. And of course, if you want your guitar signal featured on Acoustic Tuesday, it's easy, as I mentioned. Step number one, get the shirt. Step number two, take the picture. Step number three, email it to support at tonypolacastro.com with the subject hashtag guitar signal. I love seeing the guitar signals. It's really, really fun. And some of the stories that come along with them are outstanding. Ken's was really a standout because it, it, it seemed dire. It seemed like a secret code message that he was sending me. Please help now. No time to explain. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure you're wondering what your trivia question answer is uh, from this week, so let's quickly revisit our trivia question. Our Guitar Geek trivia was as follows. At the age of 27, Eleuther opened a shop on Kenmare Street in Manhattan's Lower East Side. Prior to opening this shop, this Luthier apprenticed with his uncle, Signor Siani, building Neapolitan-style mandolins, violins, and guitars, as well as apprenticed with another local Luthier, Mario Frasali, who built violins. Who was the Luthier that opened the shop? Was it Federico Moretti, Orville Gibson, John D'Angelico, or D. Elmer Stromberg? Well, if you answered John D'Angelico, you were correct. You are correct. His shop was opened in 1932 and located at 40 Kenmare Street in New York's Little Italy neighborhood. The Angelico instruments were strictly handmade and in very limited quantities. During the late 1930s, when production was at its peak, the Angelico made approximately 35 instruments per year with the help of only two additional workers. Pretty awesome stuff and a, a really in interesting insight into uh, luthier history. So that was your Guitar Geek trivia for the week. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And of course, speaking of this week, makes me think of next week on Acoustic Tuesday. And let's take a quick sneak peek into next week. What are we going to feature next week on Acoustic Tuesday? Well, next week on Acoustic Tuesday, you're going to see the result of me calling out a master guitar builder. 
we're gonna get into some resophonic hot rodding and you're gonna find out about a favorite flat picker of mine who is probably be gonna become one of yours as well. So that's what we have to look forward to next week on Acoustic Tuesday. And of course, don't miss an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. It airs every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. You can catch it on YouTube. And of course, please subscribe so you never, never miss an episode. And for any details on anything that I talked about today, go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com. Click on episode 31. It's all there. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And from Levi Kuila, the man with the technical plan, Noah Jacob Heckman Jr., the stellar looking dude and uh, bike bike brigade commander. Uh, we just want to thank you for tuning in today. Uh, thank you so much, and we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Cheers. When the heart is sponsor strong and Take away the burden from our shoulders He lived next door It sometimes get with my father and talk about